Hello everybody, welcome back to my movie review series. You know how we do it, I break down a movie that nobody watches. But today we'll be discussing Monte Carlo. This was a, uh, I'll give you the overall uh, logistics and other just overview of the movie, and I'll give you my um, overall impressions and grade. If you have not seen the movie and would like to based on my recommendation or not recommendation, you want to shut off the video because there will be spoiler alerts. So Monte Carlo was rated PG, released in 2011, a romance comedy, like the rom-coms, an hour and 49 minute runtime. So we got best friends Grace, played by Selena Gomez and Emma, Katie Cassidy, quit their waitress jobs in, a, in small town Texas to head to Paris for a summer adventure, accompanied by Grace's stepsitter Meg, played by Leighton Meester. The pre-packaged tour fails to meet their expectations, however, and soon their spirits sag. But when Grace is mistaken for a British socialite named Cordelia, she and her companions head to Monte Carlo to enjoy a week of yacht parties and cute bachelors. Then the real Cordelia arrives. So, Google says why to watch. An enchanting and light-hearted romantic comedy about three young women who go on a once-in-a-lifetime trip to Paris. Um, box office, 39.7 million. Originally released in 2011. 96% liked it on Google. But then it had some, I picked this one because it had some pretty wide ranging uh, like feedbacks. But I think it was like 40% like, like, like liked it on the IMBD. So it's 96 on Google, then really low on the other ones. And I can't find them right now, they're not popping up. So, but I enjoyed it. And nothing groundbreaking, a rom com, um, nothing super unique to the plot line. I thought the plot moved along well, I thought the characterations were fun. Um, again, it's a PG rom com movie, so it's good for the whole family. Um, I enjoyed it. I'll give. I'll just give it a flat B. I thought it was entertaining. Nothing super novel. Nothing super unique. I thought the tone of the piece was good. I thought the characterizations was was pretty well done, and the um, plot, the development, the plot movie didn't feel like it was a dry movie or slowed down at any point. So overall, I found it entertaining. You know, rated PG rom com. I don't know. I recommend it. So if you've not seen it, would like to. You want to shut off the video because there will be spoiler alerts. And so. Um, well, there was, you know, so anyway, I was trying to see, he keeps putting Princess, Princesa por accidente, I don't know why it pops up in Spanish, but regardless, that's what happens. Okay, so now we're going to be doing the plot synopsis and character development, if you've not seen the movie, you're going to shut it off here. So you open up, and you got Grace, the, uh, and Grace, or Selena Gomez plays both Grace and Cordelia in the movie, but Grace and Emma are the waitresses. And they're kind of saving up. Uh, I think the overview I read it said that they, they quit their jobs to go to Paris, but it's just like seems to be like a summer trip. I don't really think they quit their jobs. At least it's not a big part of the movie. Regardless, they're waitress waitressing. Um, they wait on some of their their classmates. They've just graduated, um, and they're working at a diner. The next scene is kind of them going uh, going through the graduation ceremony. Um, I think I think Emma comes in pretty late. He kind of just like makes a scene, you know, someone's the valedictorian's giving a speech, the whole room's quiet, and the gymnasium door's open, and she just kind of stands there like, oops. And so they graduate, and then after that, you have a scene with, because, um, you know, Grace and Emma are friends. Emma's older than Grace, you know, I think Emma's in her last year of university, and Grace is a, a, a just graduated high school. Um, and then Grace's father has married Meg's mother the other way around. Regardless, um, Grace and Meg are stepsisters. So Grace and Emma were planning to go to Paris, and then Meg, the um, stepsister, wasn't. But they sit down at a family dinner, and Grace and Meg are not close or not really, you know, gelling or getting along well. And um, they're not too excited that Meg is going to go on the trip with them. Regardless, that is the crew heading off to Paris. So they bon voyage, they go out to uh, Paris. They have this pre-planned tour, they show up to their hotel, and they compare the room to the brochure, and it's not, it's not even close to what they want it to be. Um, they have this tour guide who's just doing everything really, really quick. They literally have a scene where it's like they go to dinner, they literally put the dinner down, and like not a second later, they pick the dinner back up and give them dessert before they even take a bite. And so, know, there's some, no, it wasn't even super funny, like there's some, there were some fun moments, but I thought the relationships were well done and entertaining overall. And so after that, um, they're going to tour, I don't know if it's the Eiffel Tower or, it might be the Eiffel Tower, but I'm assuming, but they're on, they're on uh, like an Overwatch, uh, just like look tower, and 
they're looking down at the street and then they see their tour guide like getting on the bus and leaving. Right at this time, uh, Grace or Meg bumps into a guy named Riley who's an Australian who's just kind of like backpacking or just going traveling across the world doing whatever he wants. Um, and so they have a couple run-ins, you know, they run in like on the day one day and then they run into each other again on the Eiffel Tower, I think it's the Eiffel Tower. Um, but as they're seeing their bus leave, they have to run and catch up and they can't really form a relationship yet. And so that happens, they get back or they try to chase the bus down and right as they're getting down there it drives off. So now it starts raining. They're trying to make their way back to um, to their hotel. Um, they can't really find it, so they go into this really ritzy, nice hotel. And you can, that's when you meet Cordelia, again, also played by um, Selena Gomez. And she's trying to check into her hotel. And basically, she has some thing to go to in Monte Carlo, like a, a, fun, a charity fundraising event. And she doesn't want to go there. She wants to go hang out with her friends and party. And so, um, Grace is in the bathroom, and, or no, Meg and Emma are in the bathroom, Grace is in the stall, and, um, well, I guess they're all in the bathroom, but Cordelia comes in, and Meg and Emma hear, hear Cordelia talking about all of this, and very quickly, you know, realize that, you know, uh, Grace could pass off as Cordelia. So when they go back out, when they leave the bathroom, um, like, the hotel manager comes up, because Cordelia, at the beginning of the scene, is like talking to the to the front desk person, like you know, she's got some problem with a package. She's a very sn snotty, uh, rich, upscale, rich person. And so when Grace comes back out, the hotel manager approaches her and is like, you know, we found your package. Everything's good. And Meg and Emma are like looking around, like, go with it, go with it. And so she starts to fake an English accent, and now she's now playing Cordelia. So they have this nice room in this really lavish hotel. And uh, Emma's not, or Meg is not too certain about it. Um, Grace and Emma are like, you know, let's just stay here for the night and we'll figure it out tomorrow. And so they all lay down, they plan for a little nap, and then they wake up in the morning. And so, why, why do I start to do this? They're yawning. <laughs> but regardless, that's what happens. And the next morning, um, the, again, the, the French uh, concierge comes up to him and is like, you know, your car is here, your car is here. And they're all just like, no. Should we go with it? Should we not go with it? And they're just like, you know, fuck it, let's go. Uh, let's be Cordelia for the weekend. And so they get in this car, and they get on this train, and then they go drive through, um, I don't know how much, I don't know where Monte Carlo is in relation to Paris. But they go there, they show up, and then you meet Teo, who is very hesitant. Well, they get on a, they get on a private jet. They, they fly on a private jet to Monte Carlo. And so... Teo and his dad are like hosting this charity event where they're going to raise money and sell this necklace. Um, and uh, Teo's, Teo's uh, has read about Cordelia in the news and knows that she's a snotty bitch, so she, he's not excited to meet her. And obviously, it's a different character in Grace. And so they show up there. The first thing that happens is they have a ball to go to, just like a dance, and to show off the necklace for the auction. And so they get ready, they, they dress up, they have nice outfits. Um, another characterization that I kind of skipped over is Emma had a boyfriend named Owen. At the very beginning of the movie, he was like, you know, why don't you stay here and marry me? And she's like, you know, where's the ring? And he's like, you know, well, well. And she's like, well, I'm gonna go to Paris. And Owen's like, fine, go. And so she has a boyfriend that's kind of like estranged, not really just kind of like, you know, I don't wanna say rocky terms, but just they had like a, a tiff. And that's just a, a kind of in the background. So rather, I don't know, a third of the way through the movie, Owen um, calls in to the, to the first hotel that they're supposed to be staying at, which is on their, you know, their pre-planned trip that fell through, and can't really, you know, language barrier with the, with the intake person there, the concierge there. And so he decides he's going to go to Paris and find Grace, or find Emma. And so, go back to the ball, um, Grace is all dressed up, pretending to be Cordelia, Teo is kind of like showing her around, and um, the, you meet Aunt Alicia, who's, who's actually Cordelia's aunt, and they're, they're talking or whatever, and they're you know, trying to shut down the conversation as quick as possible, because it's definitely not Cordelia. So Aunt Alicia doesn't know what's going on yet. She suspects something, but regardless, that's what happens. So the next day, they play, um, they play uh, polo, 
and Grace, I don't know if she had any background in horse riding or whatever, but they play the polo game and she's not the greatest or not the best or whatever. And Aunt Alicia at this point realizes that it's not Cordelia. She literally calls Cordelia and she picks up. And then after, after the polo match, confronts Grace. And Grace is like, you know, uh, you know, uh, I shouldn't be doing this, but we're doing this for, we're like, we're like the, the, if, we, if we mess this up now, it's going to ruin the event to raise this money for charity and they're trying to raise money for schools in Romania. Um, so Aunt Alicia is like, you know, you're in big trouble, I'm going to get you, but we can kind of both agree to not ruin the event for raising money for kids. And so now Aunt Alicia is definitely in the know, and Grace is just supposed to play the part to, to not mess up the auction. And so the three girls go to a beach. They kind of have a fight, or at least Meg and Emma do. Grace kind of like tries to step in there, but it kind of is a small fight. And um, Meg goes off. And she once again runs into Riley, and Riley's like, you know, are you stalking me? No. And, you know, now they can talk a little bit, and, you know, they start they start hanging out or just, you know, going on a date or whatever. And Emma meets a, gets asked to a dinner, like a bourgeoisie, a bougie dinner with uh, this guy, Prince Dominic. And so, um, uh, and then also after the polo game, Grace and Theo start to bond as well. They, you know, they put away the horses. Grace tries to teach him how to whistle. Um, and then they go watch a fireworks show. They're all watching the same fireworks show with different guys at different places or whatever. And so Emma with her date at Prince Dominic at their dinner, you know, very quickly realizes she does not like the, the high class lifestyle, at least being a snotty, you know, arrogant person because she's a waitress and she goes to like put away some of the dishes and Prince Dominic's like, you know, we have people for that. She's like, I can put away some dishes. And so, yeah, at that, at that point you can definitely realize she's not feeling it and she's kind of, you know, missing, missing her boyfriend, Owen. And so she has, she, Emma has that realization or development. Grace is definitely forming a, a fondness for Theo. They're definitely bonding. They have a good night. They don't kiss, but they're definitely, you know, a budding romance as well as, um, Meg and Riley. And so Meg and Riley go swimming and bond a little bit about screaming or letting it out because Meg's mother has died. And, you know, she's just like, you know, talking about mourning or, you know, uh, grief or whatever. And so that's what happens there. The next morning comes up. Um, they all kind of rebond and apologize. And during this time, uh, Emma took the necklace that they're auctioning and, you know, wore it for a date and, uh, Meg had pulled off Riley's driving a little scooter and they see each other, you know, right, all of you right next to us in traffic. And so Meg takes the um, necklace off of Emma and puts it in her bag. So now all the girls are back together. They're not in her bag, but in Riley's bag. And so all the girls are back together. They kind of make up. And um, at this point, the actual Cordelia comes to town. And so they, they basically kidnap her. They literally just tie her up in her room. And there's this fancy hotel room. And... Um, Cordelia calls the police, says the uh, necklace is stolen. Um, Riley is leaving for a new place because he's not yet. He's just um, just backpacking, so they don't know where to find him. But he's he told uh, he told Meg that that he's leaving at noon at the train station. So they kind of tie up Cordelia in, in the room. I don't know if Cordelia is there yet. It's all about the same time in the movie. But they go to the, the train station and the train is just leaving as they get there at noon. And so they go back to the hotel and uh, Meg, is, uh, Meg, Grace, and them are both like, you know, I'm going to fix this. We're going to have to you know, own up whatever we're doing. And as the train's passing, they're going back. Owen, uh, Emma's boyfriend from Texas, who's trying to find them all over Paris, is getting off that exact train. And so Riley had gone back to... Um, to, he had found the necklace and had given it, it was, was going back to the suite to give it to them while the girls are at the train station, runs into the actual Cordelia. Um, and another, you know, mix match scene of like, Cordelia says the uh, necklace is stolen, then Grace runs into the lobby and tells the front desk dude that it isn't stolen, and they both think it's the actual Cordelia. So a little bit back and forth there. The police end up coming. They, they literally tie up Cordelia in the room and put like an apple in her mouth to keep her from screaming, which I don't know how that would work at all. She could easily just spit out the apple. But regardless, they get the police to go away. And Grace is, um, Grace is, you know, literally, literally modeling the, um, the necklace as people are bidding on it. And so 
the girls, they also like hide on like a, on a ledge when Cordelia shows up or whatever. And yeah, it's all about the same time. I'm not sure like the actual sequence of scenes, but that's what happens. Um, Owen goes up to the room to find Emma. You know, they have like, you know, Emma's like, I really do love you. You know, our relationship's gonna work out, blah, blah, blah. And Owen hears like Cordelia like, rocks back on the chair and knocks it over and uh, Owen hears the thud. And so Cordelia breaks out of the, breaks out of the makeshift um, restraints and goes down and confronts Grace in front of the, in front of, well, actually Grace starts to say, you know, I'm not actually Cordelia. And then she's like, Cordelia is now in the room. She's like, correct, I, I am. And so Grace apologizes. Meg and Emma go up and join her on stage and apologize. Um, Tio um, had, had a little mix up because after their, their positive, um, positive date, he, he made the move the next morning to go kiss Grace and it was actually Cordelia. So he kisses Cordelia and then uh, gets smacked and then Grace sees Theo and kisses him, and Theo's just like, what's going on here? And so, but once he, once uh, Grace reveals herself on stage, Theo kind of storms out. Owen tries to keep the, the bidding going by offering three million euros for the necklace. And then Aunt Alicia steps in and buys the necklace for six million euros because she was proud of, like, I don't know, Grace stepping up or, you know, owning up or whatever. Um, as opposed to, it seems to be, Annalisa seems to be more fond of Grace than her, her niece Cordelia. So that's what ends up happening. The police don't do any, don't, Cordelia still wants them arrested, and they're like, you're here, you know, the necklace is here, you know, all's well and good. And so they go to leave the next day to wrap up their trip. Um, Grace is going back to the States. Emma and Noah are going back to, uh, they all live in Texas, going back to Texas together. And uh, Meg had decided to stay and go on just backpacking adventures with Riley. And so throughout this, this, this ordeal, Grace and Meg's relationship as stepsisters has improved. Um, they've had the good trip, they've met the cute boys. Um, and so you have some final, final scenes where um, Owen is installing a you know, new light and her, him and Emma are enjoying their house or their apartment or whatever. Um, uh, Meg and Riley go to Machu Picchu. They scream really loud on the top, which I was hoping they weren't going to actually scream. I hate screaming, but they did that. And then the final resolution is Grace is uh, volunteering at these schools being built in Romania. And Theo shows up to help work on the project. And then they run into each other and they, they you know, properly introduce each other. And now they're going to have a proper budding romance. So that's the resolution of the movie. Overall, I thought it was, I thought it was, I thought it was a fun, fun romantic comedy. I was entertained. I enjoyed it. And so overall, B, I recommend it. So thank you for watching, and I will see you on the next one if there is one.